guys. <laughs> Just joking. Back in the day when things are cheap. Yeah. Back then. This is still a pretty good price, though. It is, yeah. It's not bad, and it's pretty sturdy. All right, yeah. so this is the final part of our saddle bag saga. We've got the cantle bag. Cantle bag. Cantle bag. Yeah. That's the back of the saddle. Yes. <laughs> the hind end. The, the, the saddle hiney that floats on top of it. So this is actually this is pretty this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's a pretty simple pattern. It's, pretty yeah. simple. Um, I know that I edited, edited, however you say that word. Edited, edited. Um, exactly. All of the instructions yesterday, and uh -huh. so I think Ryan got those updates done. We're working on finalizing the pictures, so this pattern should be ready here in the next few days. Mm, wrong. Mm, here in the next week two or two. Weeks. Two weeks. You're crazy. I'll be gone on Friday. Tomorrow's live shopping, so nothing will be done on them this week. So maybe next week. <laughs> I have already two <laughs> item cards going through with the, about ten items that are already going through. All right, Tony. You just hush. <laughs> So there is there is a pattern that is almost complete. It is has it does have edited instructions. We are finalizing things. It is on its way. Soon. So so soon, soon coming soon coming soon there will be a new pattern pack. Yes. Um, all right, and so yeah, this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one, and it's real simple. There's a top and a bottom, and actually you can use the same pattern for the top and the bottom. It just the top has a zipper in it, the bottom does not. That's right. And then the gusset is just a long rectangular piece. And the gusset and the zipper are the only two things that I've already done because I had to make a straight edge to make the gusset and I did that on a big table. It was a that lot simpler. True. Yeah. It's hard to cut off across our cowhide here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I guess I'll get started. Alrighty. Huh? That sounds good. Okay. Dean, the catalog is coming along. We are working on it every day. It, something is happening. So. Yeah, the goal is to be having it sent to the printer by May. So there will be no new news until then. Yeah, it's coming along. No news is good news. Sure. Isn't that what they say? That is, that is what they say. Now I'm making this one out of a piece of pearl apron split which is a very sturdy piece of leather and a relatively inexpensive. Denny, do you want to talk about why the pearl apron split is really good, but do you think of like a veg tan split would be good? Uh, a veg tan split would work. The pearl apron split is a chrome tan leather, uh, so it's a finished leather. Yeah. You know, it's a, and uh, it's mm. it's fairly weather resistant and it's what they make a uh, horseshoe and chaps out of right for the most part a lot of people call it mule hide yeah it's cow hide but <laughs> they call it mule hide probably because it's tough as a mule yeah but uh well and so like with the veg tan split while they're nice for lining and things they're they're not a finished leather i'm gonna say because it's from veg tan it will still absorb moisture right and so you you would need to add some material like some product to it in order to really get it weatherized to make a good bag that you would want to have on the back of the horse that might get wet as you walk through a stream or rain on it when it rains yeah. or all of these. I think rain would probably be the, the worst yeah. culprit. So I'm just making two of these. One of them is going to be the top and one's going to be the bottom. B.L. Atterbury is from Oklahoma. That's, I think that's the first time I've seen that name. Good morning. What part of Oklahoma? Is it pretty symmetrical? I hope so. It's, it looks pretty symmetrical. It's symmetrical. This bottom has a couple of D-rings coming out of it to attach it to the saddle. And that's the only thing that will attach it to the saddle is the D-rings. But that's and how do you tie it on? Is there saddle strings back there? Yeah. Okay. Just use the saddle strings. So this hooks onto the saddle strings. There's lots of different ways to do it. I a lot of times I've actually put a, a billet coming out of there instead of a D-ring. 
Mm. But then you need to put a buckle on the saddle itself. But that's it's really easy to put on and take off that way. With gotcha. Buckles. So this will lash to the saddle strings that are already on your saddle. Yeah. Okay. Just for Man, I tell you what, one. once we're done with all this, we're going to have a saddle that's ready to go on like a two-week journey. It's going to have so many bags. I'm just rough cutting this so I don't have so much leather to deal with here on this table. Bartlesville. Have you been to Frank Lloyd Wright's tower? Have you spent some time there? I still need to come and see it and maybe stay in it. That's one of my goals. I'm, I haven't done that yet, but it's the closest Frank Lloyd Wright building that I think we have. So I don't know why I haven't done that yet. We're in Bartlesville. Mm -hmm. It's the only sky, oh, I call it a skyscraper. It's the only like, that's the tallest multi-story building I think that he ever had built. Not necessarily that he designed, but that was actually built. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> you want to put your finger over here? Nope. I would like to keep my fingers. Not that you're going to cut them off, but I'd it's be worried about it. Always a possibility. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty important to, uh, to like the typing side of things. It's nice to have all 10 digits for the <laughs> typing. Um, and for the leather work, it helps. Like Michael knows, it's, it's a little bit more difficult when you don't have 10 digits to do your leather work. He says it is nice. One of these days I'll get over there. I should plan that. I sh that should be a trip that I plan. Wee. <laughs> Wee. It's all right when when that happens and you're cutting away from your pattern. <laughs> it's just when you we. Into your, yeah, pattern. into your pattern. That's a problem. Shut up, Isaac. It's also not very good when you do it in your pants. Uh, oh, Anthony. So this one, obviously, you're not going to tool. No. But this the, one, the boys, the boys in R and D did made this. that one and tooled it and did a very nice job. That's a very pretty little bag. Yeah. Be real nice looking sitting on sitting on the back of your your saddle there. I almost wonder if you have a big enough motorcycle seat if you could lash it on behind your motorcycle seat. Sure, sure. I don't know a lot about motorcycles. You could put it behind your. Car Would be seat. very good for your fender. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it might get a little warm on the bottom, huh? Hey, Dean, we're putting a zipper in this. We're not going to hand sew it, though. He doesn't care about the zipper anymore. He only cares about the catalog. This has bubbles in it. Bubbles. Bubbles. Uh, okay, I've got to punch two holes here. Uh-oh. I'm not going to... Luna, close your ears. Luna. Earmuffs. Her head's under the table. That's what happens when you don't have a solid surface underneath your cutting board. Yeah. You gonna make it, baby girl. One more time, Luna, and I'm done. That's not true. We have to set rivets there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, Luna, do you want a treat? I'm done. I'm done, Luna. <laughs> Well, Denny, did you do anything fun this weekend? Uh, I was a babysitter this weekend. You were weekend. a babysitter. My wife had to 
knee replacement surgery, and I was the chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> Did you do good? Well, I don't know. She's still hanging in there. I guess. But you know, that's a pretty involved surgery. Yeah, she, did she I just get one replaced? Just one, yeah. Her good one or a bad one? <laughs> well, the bad one is the one <laughs> she got a new. She got a brand new good one now. But I didn't realize it, but they actually cut your leg in two. They do they cut clear through the bone above your knee and below your knee? Oh my goodness! And then they bolt and cement. A metal piece on there, a, a hinge. It's amazing what we can do oh, it to is. our bodies these days. It is very amazing. Okay, I've got the top and the bottom cut, and I've got the gusset cut, so let's put those right here. Now I need to cut two little shapes for the. Got like a yard and a half. Yeah, that's that's about forty nine or fifty inches, I think. But it's a little oversized because of whatever the circumference is, plus yeah. some circumference isn't the right word, but whatever the distance around the edge is, plus <laughs> some. Okay, and I'm going to use three quarter inch D rings, so I'm going to cut myself two shapes that are three quarters of an inch. I forget, I wrote it down. The shapes are three and a half inches long by three quarters of an inch wide. And if you have one inch D rings, make them one inch wide. That's correct. <laughs> Good point. Work, I feel like this is one of the things that you just work with what you got. Yeah. You can use any leather you want to, also. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah, a soft leather would work well, but even kind of a firmer one with your construction style. Like, it's nice to have the gusset out of something a little bit softer just so it, it moves. But honestly, like, this is pretty firm. You guys see that standing right up. So, it'll work. Three and a half. No problem, Ozzy. Welcome to our Discord. We have we have some fun there. It's where all of our best friends hang out. Is that what you call this a Discord? No. Okay. No, Discord is a whole something different. Okay. It's too much for you. It's we won't. Way too we much won't. For we me. won't go there. I don't think Denny could handle the Discord. Oh, yeah. I think he'd get lost. Yes. There'd I'm be lost too many. Right now. There's too many pages to go to. Too many things to scroll through. Okay. <laughs> now then. If you would. Yes, sir. It's cement time. Yes. Okay. This piece of paper has already endured some cement. So you can just see me up All right. Like here, Are you going to do your zipper? On each side. Yes, I'm going to do All that right. while you're doing that. But I'm going to do it with the with the sticky tape. Sticky tape. Basting tape. Basting tape. Hey, everybody. Got all sorts of people coming in here. We got, we got Keel McIntyre, I think, from Cri Cripple Creek, Colorado. Cripple Creek, down on Cripple Creek. Great song. Wrote a song about it, yep. yep. TJ has a quick question for you, Denny. Okay. Do you well, know how to braid rawhide? Do I know how to braid rawhide? Down the edge of leather. <clears throat> Down the edge of leather? Maybe it's just wrap maybe it's just like wrapping it, like the back like you know, a rawhide wrap around the candle. Yeah. Well, you can. That's just more like a whip, whip stitch type of situation. Well, or you could braid it just like a, a a double loop lace. Yeah. 
Rawhide is a kind of a different beast. Yep. It's a whole different animal. Yeah. But I'm a, it's not a whole different animal. They're yeah. all the same animals, but it's it's not leather. No, it's before leather. <laughs> it's before leather. <laughs> right, it's the first thing before leather. <laughs> I've been watching this uh, thing on television about mountain men, mm. and it's this guy in Montana. Is that what Isaac made us watch? No. Okay. Anyway, there's a guy in Montana that uh, he tans his own hides and he brain tans them, and I, I'd always wondered kind of how they did it and how, how he does it. He just kind of cooks the brains in some water and then paints it on the hide. On yeah. the, and he said that softens it up. These guys, they, they talk about to a deer hide that's tanned, it'll be worth $400. And I thought, wow, I need to start tanning deer hides. And then a beaver that's worth $500. I find it must that be a really nice believe, beaver. But I guess maybe it is. Man, this uh, this leather really soaks up the glue. Yeah, it's, it's pretty porous. <laughs> yeah, I went to I did one coat and I went to stick them together and I was like, "There's no glue left to stick together." <laughs> it went away. Sonia, over here from Canada. Oh, Rebecca does the cleanup of the instruments after the surgeries. She says getting the dry cement off of the cement guns is fun. <laughs> That's an interesting job. Yeah. Uh, TJ, I think, I think the trick with rawhide is not going too tight. You, you def it has to be wet. Yeah. You know, you if it's uh, especially a full weight rawhide, you have to soak it overnight before when it's going to When John be... did those rawhide lamps, we talked about it, about pulling it. That's the only time we've done anything with rawhide because that's the only person we know that messes with rawhide. Well, I used to do a lot of rawhide candle bindings and, and horn rims. So you going to do one for us? I could. Yeah, on this saddle that I'm getting ready to build. Which yeah. the tree ought to be here pretty soon. I'm oh. kind of excited. But I'll do a rawhide horn rim and a rawhide candle binding. Well, Denny, we need to start it. talking about that then. Yeah. If you're going to, we're going to have to, we'll have to make some. Rough decisions. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to <laughs> do some planning. Well, I think it'll have to be something where we don't do it in one hour segments. Because you're doing it all live, right? I don't know what I'm doing. I just work here. I don't know if he's agreed to that, but... Then he's going to be doing it all live. It'll probably be in three-hour segments. I think Tony's feeling a little spicy today. <laughs> it's going to be after the catalog comes out. Hmm. Omar says, how are Denny and Liz? We're doing okay. Yes, Denny and Liz are fairly well today. D I Denny believe. and Liz are all right. It is super pollen-y here. I think I was starting to not feel so good at the beginning of the week, but I think it's just all the pollen in there. We come out of our, our houses, and our cars are just like a hazy yellow from the pollen. It's nasty. Yesterday, it like weird sprinkled, and I got back in my car, and I had just on s Sunday, I think it was, maybe Monday night. No, I think it was Sunday night. I went to the grocery store because I was like, I'm, I need Ben and Jerry's tonight. I'm getting Ben and Jerry's. And so we go to, uh, I got three of them. Um, I only ate one of them that night. I ate another one last night. In any case, I, I stopped by Hy-Vee's gas station before we went in to get the ice cream because I was, I was like, I need to clean my, clean my windshield. And then yesterday, Monday, we got back in our car to go back home after the weird little sprinkles. And it was just like I had not done anything. It's just, yeah, it just, just a relentless. Yeah, spring here is fun. Quiet day on the stream front. It is. We've had two total chats from on on uh, Twitch. Glad to go in Brownbird. No. All right. Oh no. 
Guys, why don't you tell me it popped back open? Uh, Liz, careful, pop back open. Pop back open. This is it. These are not staying glued together. This is not going to be fun, Denny. Probably not dried yet. That's just an opinion. There's the we have clips in here. Oh, you have a thing called a dead weight. Got it. Are y'all going to Sheridan? We sure are, TJ. Me and Denny. Yeah. And Mary June and Chris and Brandon and Dan. There's well, going to be a crew. We'll have a whole crew. Hi, Tony. Oh, look, another Tony. Tony Jensen. Yes, I got a lot of. Oh, do you have saddle patterns? I'm Denny has a ton of saddle patterns. <laughs> you, a saddle pattern is something that's a very elusive term. Unless you're building exactly the same saddle as that pattern is for, it's not going to do you any good. I feel like sad like saddles are the same as clothes where you have like dimensions that you could go on all sides to yeah. make it fit the person that's going to ride the horse and no, to fit the horse that it's going to be on. Horse. Yeah. And saddle trees are all different, you know, especially, I mean... Those plastic saddle trees that they used to build saddles on, all those were the same because they were molded. Yeah. And they were molded exact, and you could make patterns for those. Well, you know, Tony, I mean, you you talk about long live videos or, or whatever, but we absolutely, on Wednesdays and Fridays, we can't do it Thursday because we have live shopping, but on Wednesdays and Fridays, we could have you in here for a while, and you could build it in here. You know, I could. It would be much easier... To build it out there. If, yeah, if you guys could come out there. Yeah, but we don't have we don't have these fancy shenanigans. Oh look, no, we don't. It's a yellow oh, cup. Oh, speaking of shenanigans, there's a shenanigan right be there. Be on the lookout in your order for a cup. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> you won't lose that on float trip. <laughs> oh no, that'll float right down the river yeah. real good. Yeah. Hey, look out for these in Sheridan. Pick up pick up a yellow cup in Sheridan. <laughs> Do you want me to start putting glue on things? Uh, let me see here. I think, yeah, we've got to put on those chapes right there. Okay. But we also... Well, you're going to steal that first. So I could start doing one side of the gusset. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are these set yet? I'm going to stitch one side of this zipper because it's kind of giving me fits. It doesn't want to make this curve. So I'm going to stitch one side and then... Yeah, Josh, it's been a while since we've seen you. Welcome back. Jesus takes his lunch breaks with us. <laughs> that is, I remember that. Well, so, I mean, I was just thinking, so BJ, BL, sorry, got TJ and a BL. It's kind of a weird initial, just going to throw that out there. Um, you know, he's asking about the saddle patterns, and that would be something to, like, walk through, you know, how you're fitting the saddle as you're cutting it out or how you're making the patterns. Yeah, if you guys if you guys want to watch this video as we're doing it, it will show you how you kind of you have to a cut and fit each piece as you go on a saddle. You can't just. I better turn this on. Yeah, it'll help. Mm, that's right. Glowy. What do you need from out there, Denny, to make he needs it, his whole make workbench? To <laughs> what? I'll put your workbench on wheels. Can you put that my tool wall on wheels? Yep, I sure can. I'll just cut the wall out and bring it in here. We do have some amount of wall. Wouldn't it be easier to bring your camera out there? Uh, I use four cameras, Denny. Wouldn't it be easier to? Transport four cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can set up all the cameras on NDI, and then I can just get them over the over the ether to here. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. This will be a thing that we do. It'll be after Sheridan, and like after after the catalog, but definitely probably after Sheridan, because that's middle of May. So we'll get through. We'll get through the rest of April, and then we will make a plan. That'll be, that'll be a good amount of the summer. 
Yes, it will. That's the summertime deal for sure. Some summertime, summertime, not not sadness, but that's all I got. <laughs> summertime saddles. We'll put Lana on. It'll be a great time. we we'll get the jazzy feels flowing. Tony got a um, $100 box. Yeah? Did he like it? He said, wowzers. Wowzers. I absolutely love everything that came in it. Woo -woo. Can't wait for quarter number three. I can. I'm pretty much using every spare minute I have to chunk away at the catalog. So you're chunking away. I'm chunking away. Is it going to be a full catalog? Yes, this sir. Time? All the pages. All the pages. How's your chickens doing? The chickens are laying eggs. Yeah. You guys eat you a guys lot of eggs. You guys need any eggs? No, we get them from Chris's dad. We just went and picked up about eight dozen this weekend. And I'm thinking Tony probably doesn't need eggs because Tony is. Tony might need eggs right now. I do. Baby I chickens them. don't lay a lot. Of <laughs> eggs. They're not gonna lay until August. I'll start bringing you eggs, Tony. What did I do with that same table? And we went, Chris's dad is working on building a quarantine fence line so that if he gets another calf, he can keep it separated from his current cow because they typically will get from his brother-in-law, maybe like a sick calf or if the, the mother decides to not feed it or something uh -huh. um, that they don't want to deal with. And they got one, but it only lasted a week and then it died. <laughs> Yeah. It's other cow. Their their other cow was real sad about it. And I felt bad for that cow. <laughs> Had a friend for a whole week. The cow was sad. Yeah. She moped around for a little bit. Poor little steak. Steak got real mopey. Good steak. Tony right. needs eggs. Well, Tony, that's closer than a lot of people. Only eight hours. That's not too shabby. Oh, really? Nice. That's right. Do you want me to go ahead and put glue on one side and then you can put glue on the other side once you figure yeah, out how far it needs yeah, to be? Yeah, let's, let's wait till I'm okay. ready for that. Big Dog Paul said, just throw a dozen in with his next live shopping order. I don't think you want that to happen. <laughs> I don't think that leather's going to be very useful to you once it gets to you. Okay, now All right. we'll stitch this half of this zipper. make omelets. <laughs> oh, like that. It's a mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Get out of here. Um, let's see here. Tony says, Denny, are there any don'ts when 
adding zippers to projects? Any what? Any don'ts? Any tips? Any specific, like, don't do this? Uh, no, just make sure you've got enough room from from the leather to the zipper for your slide to slide. Don't. That's, that's kind of important. Don't sew it in until you've put the zipper pull on it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Maybe do take your time when you're going over the zipper teeth to make sure that you don't break a needle. Yeah. I'm not even going. You're not over even going needle. over. On a plastic zipper, I would. But I don't like to do it on I know a lot of times if Clayton was doing that, he would walk it across the end and, uh -huh. like, hit in the middle and then hit on either side. Because... You'll, you'll break a needle if you try to just run right over the teeth, especially on those brass zippers. Hello, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Um, make sure, especially with these number five, the number five and the number ten brass zippers, the zipper teeth go a specific direction. And so when you put the zipper pull on, you have to make sure that you're going this, the, the right direction with the teeth. I'm with the, um, just the nylon zippers. They don't have a direction really. Like the zippers work both ways. You can put a pull on, you know, each side, pull it to the middle and you can open it both ways. Like you can do that with the nylon zippers, but the brass zipper teeth are directional. And so it does, you, you do have to be careful when putting the pull on to make sure that it's going the right way. Um, and I know some people will even like wax their teeth mm -hmm. to help get the slide, help get it lubed up so it goes good. Yep. Yeah. So you can take some beeswax or paraffin wax and rub it on the teeth and then open and close the zipper a few times and that'll. Okay. Trying to think what I need to do next. Um, I think according to the instructions, you put this on. Yeah. <laughs> or you can set the rivet in these, which is I'm getting close to doing. I just edited these instructions yesterday, so they're semi-fresh. Oh, so you, so you know. <laughs> uh, Denny, do you have anything specific whenever you're putting these D-rings? Do you like to make sure they're hanging out a certain amount so that you don't uh, have to worry about it when you're sewing? I don't. Uh, no, not on not on this machine. Some machines you might need to uh, to put them out quite a ways. Okay, I'm going to do that. These machines you can stitch pretty close. And this is going to be a chunk. A chunk. This yeah. is going to be a chunk going a through. A chunk. Yep. Okay, I'm going to find the center of this. Okay. Here, I'll put some glue on the top side of this. Yes. So this it gets glue on the top side, unless you wanted to sew it. Do you? Because this is yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with the blind seam on top. You are. Yeah, so you, we want the the cement there. Okay, even though this leather isn't very forgiving. Right. Because you could do it bottom to bottom if you wanted. Right. All right, we got our D rings on, and then we'll set a rivet in that if you want. But really, it sews in and. You honestly don't necessarily need the rivet. Yeah, let's not put a rivet in. Okay, we're not going to put a rivet in there because it's going to be sewn in. You think that's going to fold around this? Oh, yeah, one way or another. Okay. <laughs> I cut this gusset out of the belly, so hopefully it would be a little more, have a little more forgiveness to us, but... This is pretty stiff stuff. So. Yes. Depends on the piece of leather you've got, really. Which I think is why on this example that we have over here, you know, the sides are oil tan and then the top is veg tan. Right. Because then the, the gusset will fold way easier. Sure glad you're the glue meister. Oh, thanks. Me too. Otherwise, what would I do?
So you marked your center here. Yeah, I marked the center on on both pieces. I need to do it on this one too. Thanks for reminding me. No worries. On the gusset and both the top and the bottom panels. Although it really soaks in. We'll see if it sticks. We can try to stick it because I think I did two coats on the gusset. So we can see if the single coat on the top here lets I'll it stick. get the air dryer and dry it real good. Maybe. It's probably dry enough pretty well. See if this works. This is it's a this is the kidney kidney bean kidney bean saddlebag. <laughs> yes, that's I right. can't even say it. Yeah, Larry says to cut the cut the teeth off the end, which you absolutely can do. I think Denny used stops on this, so like after the stop, you could just cut all the teeth that are left on. But you do want to make sure that you cover that up because otherwise it'll look weird. Yeah. And weird's not what you're after. Yeah, we don't we don't want weird. Okay. Oh I Yeah, let me mark it on this side so I can see it. Now we've got some of this massive. Hair on acid wash, yeah. Sure have, yeah. If anybody out there is looking, you can see all of the hair on acid wash cowhide rugs that we have. Banner on the website, Discord. Is it sticking? Sort of. Yeah, this is a bit of a bear. This leather is firm. If I would have known it was this firm, I would have picked a different leather. <laughs> but use what you got it's real firm all right guys well denny wrangles this gusset on um after the show we will be uh hanging out on discord for a little bit and going through some hot fix crystals <coughs> excuse me um i have organized everything by 
color. And so I have packets of different color hot fix crystals. Um, we don't sell the tool. I think maybe we did at one point, but we don't have them anymore. But you can buy them on Amazon for like $15 I saw yesterday. Um, but I have quite a few different options here when it comes to some hot fix crystals. So if anybody is interested in those, it is a heck of a deal. So just try to clearance these out, get them gone. If you do anything with hot fix crystals, a lot of them are Swarovski. Some of them are Preciosa. Um, and so just be aware that there are two different varieties, but for the most part, they are Swarovski crystals. I don't even know if you can buy these anymore. I don't even know what Swarovski is doing with crystals or with beads. Vanessa, I'm sure Tony will put it in the chat. It's just Springfield leather. Oh. Thanks, Tony. You guys, I'm not going to start right at the center on this on the back. I'm going to leave a little leeway. Mm -hmm. That way, when I get all the way around, I can measure to see how long I need it and, gotcha. and stitch that up. And then I will finish stitching the actual gusset on. It's almost impossible to tell an exact length on a gusset on something like this. Did I say Discord or Twitch? No, before that. We're going to be on Twitch. I don't know if I, I... I didn't mean Discord. We're not live streaming on Discord. Is that even... I don't think that's a thing. It's a it chat. Is, a is it? Is it? Okay. Well, we'll be on Twitch with the, with the crystals. I mean, we're on Twitch right now, but we'll be twi twitching with crystals. <laughs> But you can also go to Discord and look at the hair on cowhide colored acid rugs. Or just chat with your friends that are there. There's lots of chat on there. My goodness, Denny. I'm about there. I can just make this final. He's, this corner. is not going to want to roll around. I'm telling you that right now. There we go. We got it. I think that glue's holding pretty good. Yeah. I did two coats on the gusset side and one coat on the front. Oh, here. Let me. I should probably start gluing this up. Why not? I think we're going to finish this today. Yeah, and that side will be a lot easier because this has already made the curve. No worries, Vanessa. We got you. All right. So these little billets go inside. So the glue goes on this side. We're going to start gluing. Get two coats on this while you're wrangling that side up. For a dog that's as like violent as she is, it's pretty funny <laughs> that she really does not care for any loud sounds. That girl, like, she hears a dog barking outside in our backyard. Like, one of our neighbor dogs will start to bark. She like immediately <laughs> hightails it for the backyard so that she can jump on the fence and just like kill whatever has disturbed the peace. Hollows. Yeah. I saw a really cool video last night and it was calculating, um, the area of, okay, so they had a wheel, right? Like they just had like a, a bicycle tire and there was a point on the tire that they tracked as it went around the wheel. And so they got this arc 
that the tire moved in. That was like the, the, the line that the wheel had. So like, imagine this is your wheel. You put a dot here. So you're going to start here. Or maybe you put a dot at the bottom. That actually makes more sense. So it rolls around the tires. It goes forward, around, up like this, over, and then back down. So you have this not a circle. It's like an elongated circle. And they were like, how do you find the area of this elongated circle? And they went through the whole thing about finding the area of the elongated circle. And then... What? Ellipse. Oh, no, ellipse. Uh, yeah, but the ends would have been pointy because if you would have reflected it, you would have had like a pinched end and it wouldn't have been oh. an actual ellipse. Okay. So they took it. Anyways, it was pretty fascinating. And really the whole thing was, it's just like a, a thought experiment about how to solve problems. So like just like breaking the problem down into like here's the triangle inside the like ellipse like figure <clears throat> and then you can calculate the area of the triangle and then you can fit like it all came down to the fact that the the funky edges so like everything that wasn't inside this triangle was the actual area of the circle so like it, anyways I don't know it was really fascinating and it made me be like if this is how they would teach math in schools, I would like that better. I feel like I would have been more enthusiastic about math. Or maybe they tried and just you're 15. And things are hard when you're 15 because you just don't care. How's it going, Denny? Good. I'm trimming this gut, this gusset length right now. I got all the way around without any major problem. Success. Oh, now you got to roll it. Well, I still got to put this gusset together at the end and then finish this out. He's got to roll out like a transformer. <laughs> Sonia said, now that's a good finger workout. <laughs> See, Vanessa's a math teacher, which is why I started talking about my math problem. She said, a cycloid. Right? Am I reading that? Yeah. Cycloid is the term used for shape created as the circle rolls. It was a pretty fascinating video. How's it going, Liz? Guys, we're going to have some Stingray remnant packs for you tomorrow on live shopping. So they're just leftovers from the boot industry. They have, most of them have like a vamp and a heel counter cut from them. Um, so you may not have the crown, but you do have some pretty decent usable sections of Stingray. That would be good, like inlays for a knife sheath or wallet pockets. And then the boys in R&D were kind of cleaning out under their table and Clayton had an old bin full of exotics that he had been collecting over the years to just make random stuff out of with. And he was like... They were like, you know what? We're never going to use a bunch of this. So we've got some shark, some legit shark. I think we have like three or four skins of shark from there that we'll have tomorrow. And then we had a couple cool, like fun colors of some whip snakes or some water snakes. 
I don't know, there'll just be some fun exotics tomorrow. So if you're in the market for some exotic leathers, join us on live shopping. All right. Now we have the bottom. Our tabs glued on. They will get stitched in. Are you sure you don't want me to rivet those? Uh, I don't think we'll need to. Okay. You can if you want to. It's up to you. I guess we do still need to put glue on that, so. thread do you use for the sewing machine? Uh, this is a 207. 207. So we on got it. On top and a 138 on the bottom. Perfect. We've got a Cobra class 26. Um, we sell the same, it's just a lubricated polyester, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lubricated polyester um, thread. It's the same thread that leather machine sells. We've got it in a lot of different colors. This machine will handle up to a 277, I believe. Stitches 207 very nicely. Mm -hmm. Stitches 138 very nicely. I've never, I'm sure it stitches 69 thread good too. Oh but yeah. I, but I have never. Yeah, it would be it would be all right if you wanted to do that. Then he says, "I don't need to clip you guys; just burn you off." All right, let's see if I can turn this inside out. You want to turn it inside out, just right here? Cool, thanks. Where they can see me. Uh huh. Anguish. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see the anguish. To actually see if we were out there, I have that little post steel I could turn it inside out on. But we're in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what one of those, what are those called? Shoe irons? Yeah. It's Cobbler a, iron? Yeah. I'm sure. I'm not sure what they call it. You're probably it's something close, closer than I would. It's going to be a cast iron post with a cast iron foot looking doodad on the top, and it's usually removable. And you can put a different looking foot doodad on the top, or you can put a little pokey doodad on the top. But they are really handy for setting rivets in funky places. So, like, if we wanted to set this rivet after we sewed it, it would be you could put the bag over the little post and set a rivet on it because it's a cast iron post. Um, or for things that need some finagling. <laughs> like we're doing now. Like right now. Man, these people are talking about a brick oven for pizza and it's just making me hungry and want pizza. Every night I ask my husband, what are we eating? And he says, I don't know. And we walk into the kitchen and I look at him and I say pizza and then he just laughs at me. And then we make something with chicken. <laughs> chicken pizza? No. Barbecue chicken pizza? I did. I made some pad thai the other night because I figured out a really kind of simple solution because Chris just makes a lot of sandwiches and I don't want to eat that many sandwiches. So I figured out a quick pad thai. Yeah. Who? You? Jenny. What's oh. that? He's just thinking. How'd that go? Well, I stitched, I used the wrong side for the finished side, but that's, oh, well. that's the back anyway.
right, you can glue that now. All right. Glad that's over, you guys. <laughs> Nineteen quiet ones. Yeah. Maybe they're maybe they're preparing for a quiet place, part three. <laughs> I know. I'm excited. We saw the trailer when we went to see Godzilla last weekend. It's gonna be good. It's probably one of one of the best trilogies that's come out recently. Yeah, also, if you like n not having Italy, like, any bodily function happen in a theater, we went and saw The Quiet Place Part 1, and the whole movie, like, the whole premise is that the monsters, like, you have to live silently because the monsters follow sound. So they're deaf, or they're blind, but they can hear really, really well. And so everybody in this new world, after the aliens came, have learned to live silently. And so, like, you're just in a movie theater that's just silent, and, like, you can't cough. You can't, like, sneeze. Like, you just, like, you can't do anything. Like, I had, like, a tickle in my throat, I feel like, for half of it. And I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... The look. No, get your feet down. Oh, gosh. I almost died from a heart sometimes. Yeah. It's, they did well. They did well. It's such a good... It's got a great storyline. Bring them on, that sticky glue. Has she ever been glued? Um, no, she sat on a paint can lid once. <laughs> so that was, you know, kind of adhesive like. She had a blue butt for a minute. But she hasn't ever been glued. What kind of saddle are you going to make, Denny? I ordered a 15 and a half inch Will James tree. Will James. No, Will James. That's the shape of the fork, the front end. What is, yeah, the, what does that mean? Well, the the last one I made was, was what they call an A fork or a slick fork. Okay. Uh, Man, Will James is, is fancy. He's got his own fork. Yeah, yeah. Will James was a, was a, an artist. Okay. Uh, a very famous Western artist. He, of course, he's long dead and gone. And so, did did he like have this particular kind of saddle in well, mind? And so, somebody they, made I it for him. I'm not sure if, but uh, they named this this tree after Will James. All right. Piece. And it's what they call a swell fork, which is wide in front and to narrow. Yeah. See, originally, western saddles, they used the fork of a tree like right. this and just turned it upside down. So the, the sides of the front just went straight down. But, okay. But now... The, and it was whatever the tree was. Yes, whatever shape the tree was or whatever they whittled it out to. Okay, you know. yeah. But nowadays, they make swell fork saddles, which, which come out in front of you. So when the horses buck you off or try to grab something with your knees. But before the slick forks, you just squirted yourself out like a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also why they make buck and roll. Right. For those fake slick. fork saddles, so you don't squirt yourself so out. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right, Denny, how's it looking? It's looking good. Let me do a little bit of air work on it. Do some air work. Hot air work. <laughs> I 
sure did, Foxy. I said shark. Not cow sharks, but real sharks. We've been hoarding them, and we've decided to stop hoarding them. We didn't know we were hoarding them. Yeah, they were hoarded by accident. Uh, by... What was that? By they, omission. They, they were hidden. <laughs> yeah. If you guys saw all the leather we had here, you would understand how stuff gets. Yeah, for those up. of you that come on tours, you tell them about it. You, you, we have we have leather everywhere. It's coming out our ears. She is an Australian. That ear shepherd. leather is weird stuff too. Yeah, that's some. <laughs> you don't want to mess with that ear leather. Can confirm. <laughs> Your stick is too big to fit. Show everybody your bucky. Come on. There it is. Showing her bucky off. Huh? What, Danny? If you work on a saddle. What's that? If you work on a saddle from start to finish, what about a week? Like if that was what you were doing? Uh, a plain saddle, a bit, forty to sixty. Hours, give or take. So a week, week and a half on a plane yeah. one? Well, ideally it would take a little longer because you need to let some plate, some pieces dry a little more than others. Yeah. I mean, you can make one faster. Is is a lot of making the saddle waiting for the parts to dry after yeah. you've molded them to, to fit? Cure, to cure, yes. yeah. Especially like the ground seat because everything's wet. Mm -hmm. And the skirts, you know, you've got to... You've got to uh, shape them and block them in, and then let them dry, so it'll hold their hold its shape well. So ideally, maybe you'll have two or three saddles going at once, so you can kind of yeah, jump from part to part as things ideally, are yes. going. That's a lot of tables that you would need to make three saddles at once. <laughs> <laughs> well, you a lot of storage space yeah. where you can stack parts. How's your fit? How about you could open the zipper and go from the inside? I could, but I think I've got it here. I don't want to make things easy on them. <laughs> I want to make them just as rough as I can. Oh, so doing a fully tooled saddle, what are you talking? A month? At least. Yeah. At least. Like that last one I did, that full flower stamp saddle, I had approximately 300 hours in. Woo! So. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Last seam. You have to be careful going over those D ring tabs. Six just don't care. Sonia, that was a full floral, full western floral. You you tooled almost every piece of that, that saddle. I 
And then shoot, after you made all the, all the, uh, add-ons that your, yeah. that your horse trader wanted, you probably had another 150 hours in, yeah, right. in, the, uh, what are those things called? Tapaderos. Tapaderos. And I made a set of full flower stamp saddle bags. Yep. And a bridle. Yeah. The list goes on and on. Fancy tooling and embellishments could double that time. Actually, I, I think it more like quadruples the time that you probably have in the saddle to do all the tooling. Probably, yeah. You made it! Did uh, we? I've got to restitch this one little part here. I missed. Got himself a rat's nest. Yeah. A bird's nest? Bird's nest. A bird's nest. Or a rat, whichever. A ratty bird. There's no such thing as a ratty bird. Hey, Luna, you're fine. Come here. So, so people that, I mean, how long does a, a horse live? Like, how long can you ride a horse? Like, to do, your, to do your, to do your, well, right. So how long can you ride a horse? That's why I was like. Depends on the horse. Uh, 15 or 16 years old, they generally consider pretty much aged. Yeah. But, you know, I had a horse that was 18 years old and I sold it because I didn't want to watch it die. Yeah. And they rode it for another five or six years. Rode oh, wow. it hard. And and then they turned it into a school horse for a, a riding academy. Little kids rode it around. Huh. Well, yeah, so, like, I'm like you're, you know, you do a fully tooled saddle as a person that has horses and wants a nice saddle. Like, you're probably going to buy this one saddle that goes with this horse and fits you. And then how do you, like... Sometimes, okay... All right, that's that's a good topic. Okay. A lot of people say, I want to I want a saddle to just fit this horse. Yeah. If they've got plenty of money and that's all they want to do, that's all they care about. Like if it's a, if it's a fifty thousand dollar show horse or something, yeah, build that one horse, one saddle. Okay. But if they're wanting a saddle that they can use for their lifetime, right. Build one that'll fit most horses. Okay. You know. Can you like make up for that will... with like blankets and maybe the shearlings oh. on the bottom, or does it matter? Like I don't know about horses, so I don't know. There is some blankets. There is some most shearlings. most saddles will, if the dimensions are right, and what I consider right is uh, an eight inch high gullet and an eight and a half inch wide gullet. That will fit ninety percent of the horses in the country today. Okay. So unless you've got some weird, yeah. weird horses. Yeah. Yeah. If, high withers. Yeah. And I high assume that are extra wide. a lot of people that have horses or maybe have several horses, whenever they're looking for the horse that they're going to get, they maybe kind of stick with one sure. variety because it's like you can get familiar with it. You don't have to change all your things. I don't know. That's exactly and right. it's also more economical to have a saddle that yeah. can maybe go on three different horses yeah. than just a one horse. Yeah. Yeah, if you're, 
like if you're picking a horse that you're like if you've got a a, a bunch of cows and, and you take care of your cows horseback mm -hmm. you'll want most of your horses to be about the same type of horse right you know it just makes sense yeah or that's what most people are going to yeah. be doing you know don't worry about that All if right. someone comes to me and says build me a saddle and i'll say well what what kind of saddle do you want and they say i don't care I just want a saddle I can put on the, all these horses. That's what I was building. Gotcha. If they come to me and say, hey, I've got this horse that's extra wide, you know, and, and all this and that. Or you got your big lady with her big horse. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> right. All righty, guys. We've got a cantle bag. This thing ain't going anywhere. You could really. Yeah, you could whop someone. You could hurt somebody with that thing and put some bricks yeah. in it. So we've got cantle bag. <laughs> for all your canned goods for your cans for your cans <laughs> put all your cans in here and store them away keep them with you whatever you we also make a can bag <laughs> it's probably tall enough for a beer yeah yeah those make it out of some neoprene the little short pony can yeah, yeah you could you could 100 percent Stack some beers in there for. I don't know if your horse would love that, but you will. There's a song about that. Yeah, beer for my horses, whiskey <laughs> for my men, and beer for my horses. <laughs> Look at that. It's a beer bag. Got you a beer bag. Do you know how many saddles you've made? Uh, 250, give or take. Look at you. Did you have to add that up recently? No, but that was when I stopped keeping track. That, that was, was around about where I was at, you know. That was a long time ago. So at this point, you made just the one for the store, right? Yeah. And then the little baby one, which I consider yeah. a saddle. And and then the one that I did during the saddle. And in your class. Yeah. So maybe 253. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. But repaired. Repaired like a thousand. That's that's what I did most that's of. The, that's the bread and butter. Bread and butter, yes. Yeah. You're going to be fixing other people's work or your own. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Well, that is the end of our saddle bag saga. So be on the lookout here in the next few weeks for the full pattern pack. It will have all five that we have done. So we've got the cantle bag. We've got the pommel bags. We've got the 10 by 12 round bottom. We've got a, a 10 by 10 single billet. The 10 by 12 was a double billet. And then we have the medicine bags. Yes. <laughs> Once again, I just edited that's all a, the instructions yesterday. That's a bunch of bags. So, you did all the bags. Um, next week, we'll be doing something. And then Friday, since we finished this today, we'll figure something out to do on Friday. It'll be fun. Yeah. So, alrighty, folks. Have a great rest of your day. And then if you are interested in some flatback crystals, hop over to Twitch, and I will be selling those there. So, see you on Friday. Bye-bye.